Hello runners and triathletes and welcome to my channel. I'm Holly of Renewal Fitness and Nutrition Coaching. I'm a registered dietitian, holistic nutritionist and personal trainer, and I'm also training for a half marathon. So we're currently in a series on my channel about training for the half marathon that I have coming up, which I am also using to share little tips and tidbits about how you can train better and optimize your nutrition to perform better in your running and racing as well. So in this video, we're going to focus specifically on hydration, why it matters and how much you need. In my last video, I talked about this a bit, but it was more about what I was doing and trying to train my gut to take on more water. This video is going to be more specific about guidelines so that you know how much you should be drinking throughout your training and racing. So why does hydration matter? Who cares if you drink water when you're running or racing? Well, number one, it impacts your performance. So if you are as little as 2% dehydrated, this can impact you with greater fatigue, muscle cramps, nausea, things like that. So it can hinder you performing to your best if you're not adequately hydrated. Additionally, if you are not properly hydrating, it can contribute to GI issues. And GI issues can be a big hindrance to performance as well. This is what takes a lot of people out of races or slows down paces because we're having symptoms and problems going on in the gastrointestinal tract. So if you're not adequately hydrating, it can contribute to things like nausea or stomach cramps, abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea. So you want to make sure that you are getting in enough water. Lack of hydration can also be a contributing factor to what is called gut permeability. This is something when we are doing endurance running at a fairly high intensity that the body responds in this way where there's lack of blood flow to the intestines and it can lead to what's kind of referred to as like leaky gut in the temporary situation when you're running. When this happens, it can lead to a variety of problems. Dehydration is one factor that can contribute to this or in contrast, if you are drinking enough, it can help to reduce some of these problems in the GI tract. Let's talk guidelines for ideal hydration. So first of all, you want to start your run, whether this is a training run or a race, properly hydrated. You don't wanna go into a run already dehydrated. So one little tip, when you wake up and you go to the bathroom, check your pee. If it is kind of an amber color or a dark yellow, then you're definitely dehydrated. You need to drink more water. If it's very pale, very light color, then you're probably pretty good, but you still want to hydrate before you go. So ideally, you should have at least 16 ounces within the two hours before you go for your run. If you can take on more, like up to 20 ounces or so, that's great. I personally can't do that much. It just jostles around in my stomach. But the more water you, you can take on, the more hydrated you can be, the better. But this is definitely something that you're going to have to play with to know what your stomach handles well. But ideally, make sure that you're drinking water before you go on your run to make sure that you're already fairly well hydrated because all you're going to do during your run is get more dehydrated. So you don't want to start in a dehydrated state. So make sure as soon as you wake up, gulp down at least a good eight ounces of water and continue to drink throughout the morning before you go for your run or race as much as you can tolerate. Then during your run, the general guidelines are that you want to consume about one to two cups of water per hour while you're running. So for a visual, this cup is eight ounces of water. So you want at least one of these per hour, if not two. Another way that you can think about this is to drink about four to six ounces every 15 to 20 minutes. Or if you wanna really simplify that, you could say about five ounces every 20 minutes. Five ounces looks like this. So every 20 minutes, you wanna be taking on about that much water. An even easier, I think, way to think about this is a good sip is approximately one ounce. So if you can get in five good sips, within about 15 to 20 minutes, you're probably doing pretty good. Now, the thing with hydration and nutrition in general is that it's very personalized. So while these are good guidelines to follow, they may not always work for you. So it's really important that you get to learn your own body and it's gonna be very dependent on the type of training you're doing or the type of racing, the temperature outside, right time of day, um, how hard you're working out, 
So one thing that you can do is start weighing yourself before your run and then weigh yourself after. If you've lost a lot of weight, then you know you're not drinking enough during your run. So you want to come in pretty close after your run to the same weight that you had before your run. This means that you're getting in enough water and maybe nutrition if you're doing a really long run. Also, if you come home and you're pretty dehydrated, maybe you've lost two or three pounds, then try to consume about 16 ounces for every pound lost during your run in order to rehydrate. Another factor to consider is how long your run is. So if you're running for an hour or less, just plain water should be fine. You shouldn't need to consume anything else. After an hour, that's where you want to consider starting to add electrolytes and probably some carbohydrates. This is why there's a lot of sports drinks out there because they combine sugar and carbohydrates with electrolytes to help replenish you. So you might do this in powdered form. There are powdered carbohydrates, there are powdered electrolytes. Generally, you're probably going to need at least 300 milligrams of sodium per hour. And this could go as much as maybe 700 or so. But this is going to be very personalized and very dependent on the type of running that you are doing, temperature outside, how much you're sweating. So people have different sweat rates. One person may sweat a lot and need a, need a lot more sodium and water than another person. This is something that you can kind of experiment with. Um, you can't even get these things tested like your sweat rate. But again, weighing yourself is one way to check. Or if you just know you're a very heavy sweater, you soak through clothes, then you're probably going to need more water and electrolytes. But this is something to kind of experiment, play around with, and try different amounts to see what seems to work best for you, both per for performance as well as for GI issues. So these are the basic guidelines on hydration for running. I hope that this is helpful to you and has given you some good little tips and information that you can apply to your training to help you perform a little bit better. If you have any questions about this, please put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video about half marathon training. In the meantime, blessings on your health and fitness and running journeys.